All right, so today you've got um, two handouts, exercise 218 and assignment 203. Uh, we're going to walk through exercise 218. We're finally getting to the stage where there's going to be some like environmental conditions in V-Ray. It is not by any means the complete environmental conditions. We'll make it better than this, but this is the first day where we're actually starting to get into some real scenes uh, and to get some much better renderings. So I'll walk through that. Uh, you are going to be placing your um, building in San Francisco and being able to render the skyline, so we're kind of going in the direction of uh, doing some fun stuff. Uh, assignment 203 is kind of uh, a build-up of the things that you've already been doing. Um, basically, you're going to create your skyscraper. Uh, notice that the skyscraper is bigger and taller than the one that you've been working with in practice exercises, so you're going to have to do a different one for it. Um, you're also going to do some things that you don't yet know how to do. We'll learn those things on Wednesday. Uh, and the whole thing is due on Wednesday when we get back after spring break. So not on Monday, but on Wednesday. Uh, so you'll still have some time on, on um, that week to, to get the renderings together. Uh, I will also ask you to do an unroll of your surface. Not every building will unroll perfectly, but I want you to at least understand what the unroll command does and how it works, and, and we'll talk through uh, that as well. Um, so you can read through that. Uh, today we're going to work with exercise 218, um, which is kind of your, your first introduction to environments and V-Ray and kind of how it works. So right now I have my um, building, maybe, if it decides. There we go. I have my building from uh, last lecture, and it's running really slow right now, um, probably because my mouse is terrible. Um, and so, come on, there we go. Um, so there it is. I took a few chunks off the side just to make it a little bit more interesting, and I gave it a little bit of a twist. So it's not, not nothing dramatic, but at the same time, it is something. Uh, and I've thought through my layers a bit. Uh, so I actually have a um, what's called the inner skin, which is outside. Then I have all my floors. Uh, my, my floors uh, have been separated somewhat, so I have a ceiling. Uh, that's here. I also have something that's a floor so I can change the material. I assigned a white material to all of the ceilings. I assigned a uh, concrete to all of the floors. Um, so I was just trying to prep some of that. Um, this particular building does not have the elevator core in it. I can go back and add that later on. Uh, but as I start to work through this, I'm going to uh, play with a few things to, to start to try to get them right. Uh, the first thing is that I do want there to be a layer that's just called uh, building or skyscraper. Uh, and I want that so that I can have that as the primary layer and then have um, these other layers, the ceiling, the floors, the inner skin, as sub layers uh, below skyscraper. Okay, uh, And then we're going to start to work with a few other things. So when some of you have already done some rendering, uh, and you've noticed that the skyscraper glass, one, has a big band with a hole in it, so we have to deal with that part of it too. Uh, but also, if you actually do the rendering, you see the edges of the floors kind of peeking through. Uh, that's one of the problems with V-Ray and Rhino. Whenever two surfaces collide, sometimes we don't get a good render. Uh, and so what I'm going to do to, to kind of tweak that a little bit is I'm going to make an inner skin and an outer skin. And glass always works better with two skins anyway. Um, so what I'll do is I'll take and turn off my floors and my ceilings. So I have just my... Uh, skin that is my object um, and I'm going to work from either the top or from the bottom uh, it kind of depends what works best for you uh, and I'm going to create a little line that goes through this building in the center um, and I pick this usually I would do it as a diagonal but since I clipped off the bottom corners uh, I'm doing it just across the center uh, once I've created that polyline which should be there see it from underneath there it is I'm going to do a scale 1D to, to enlarge this skin. So first thing I'll do is copy. Um, so I'll go to copy. And I'm going to copy in place so that I have two copies right on top of each other. Right? Then I'll change the object onto a new layer. So let me change object, layer. There it is. Uh, and I'm going to be working on this layer 5, which we will call the outer skin. There. And I can also move the outer skin onto the skyscraper layer. And I can also turn off the inner skin. So all I have is this outer skin, I hope. Oops, I didn't quite. 
There we go. And I'm going to do a scale 1D. 1D. And the reason I'm doing 1D is because I know it's only scaling in one direction at a time. And it's easier to work with it in one direction. So first thing I want to do is scale the length of this building. So right now I know my existing length here was 200 feet. Half of it would be 100 feet. Notice I'm scaling from the very center of the building. Uh, so instead of 100 feet, I might say 100 feet 2 inches. Something like that, so it's slightly bigger. I'll do the same thing in this direction. See, uh, it was it was 100 feet. Half of that would be 50 feet, so I'll say 50 feet 2 inches. So it's slightly bigger. And then if the height is really critical, I can make the height a little bit taller too. Uh, so right now it was 600 feet, so I'm going to scale 1D again. Um, there. And we'll go up there, and we'll say that this should be uh, 600 feet, um, 6 inches. I went a little bit more on the height. Okay, so that's been done. Now we can turn back on the inner skin, right, and it should be just inside the building. So we shouldn't see it poking out, which is exactly what we want. Perfect. And so now I need to start to apply my materials. And I've already preloaded some of the materials in, uh, which I believe a lot of you did before. Uh, the first one was the glass skyscraper, and then I brought in a textured white sheetrock for the ceilings uh, and a concrete without any seams for the floors. Um, and I went ahead and I assigned these by layer. Uh, my ceilings and my floors have already been applied. Um, my inner skin has been applied, but my outer skin has not. So let me go ahead and take the glass skyscraper and apply material to layer, and I'm going to do it to the outer skin, and I'll say OK. So if I were to look at this, and let's look at it for a second in rendered mode, right? we get some spots where there's some holes that are in my building. You guys see that hole? I know it's hard to see it on the screen. You've probably seen it as well. This skyscraper um, glass texture was designed to have um, some bands that happen um, so that it looks a little bit more like a skyscraper when you tile it together. The problem is that it's uh, designed to be one panel in a much larger building, so we need to do some texture mapping to make it look right. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and select both of these surfaces because I'm going to texture map them both, and I'd like them both to be the same. And I'm going to go to Properties, and I'm going to go to Texture Mapping, and I'm going to say Create a New Box Mapping. Chances are a box is the most appropriate um, for your particular building, though you could try cylindrical if your building was more round in shape. Um, and so I'm going to go ahead and pick a bounding box for these. My coordinate system is going to be world. I do want it capped, right? And so I've gone through and I've created it. Now we need to have a little bit of a look at what's happening here. Uh, first thing is I'm going to switch x equals y equals z, right? So we end up with equal points going around the building. Right. Then I'm going to change my UVW repeat value to be much, much higher. I did lock them for right now. Uh, and we'll say, uh, let's try let's try 20, and we'll have a look here. All right. It's always hard to see it, but that's starting to look pretty good. We may need to increase that value a little bit more. So let me select them again. There and there. Maybe go to 30. Yeah, it's looking pretty good. All right. So there isn't a right or a wrong answer. You're just looking for what looks what looks appropriate. Okay. So I'm going to switch back to shaded mode for just a second, so we can see my building. Right. And we'll go ahead and we'll turn back on my floors, um, so that those are those are on as well. Now this building is virtually done for right now. Right. So now I need to start working with it into a scene and with some environmental stuff. So I'm going to make sure that there isn't an infinite plane, there's no sun, there's no lights, nothing in this, and I'm going to use it as a block ultimately. So let me go ahead and delete these extra layers while we're here. All right, so all I have is the skyscraper, and I have all of my information about the skyscraper. Let's move this down just so it's organized. There we go. So I'm good to go. I'm going to go ahead and save this. Excellent. And now I'm going to go to the course website, and I'm going to go to Exercise 218. 
and on exercise 218 down here at the bottom, I have download SF downtown 3D model, right? And so let me, I forget whether it's through Dropbox. So you do, it is through Dropbox, so you have to um, click on the link and then go ahead and download. And it's a rather large file, so you have to be a little bit patient while it downloads. Alright, so it's done. And it's called SF Downtown. There it is. I want to save it onto my flash drive. So let me um, copy it. Let me go to my flash drive. 18. There it is. And I'll go ahead and paste it here. And once it's done pasting, that's what I want to open. All right, so I'll double click it to open it. Now, there are other versions of this that are floating around that you may be able to find online. This is by no means the best one. It just happens to be the one that I have. This was done by some grad students in Berkeley before Rhino even existed. Um, it is unfortunately a mesh, not a, a NURBS object. So it's a little bit chunky, but it tends to do its job quite nicely. I've done some things to set it up so that it would be ready for a site for you. Um, there is, in fact, a little blue site that's right here uh, that will allow you to plop your building conveniently right on a nice empty street corner. Okay, um, But we can take a step back here and zoom out and we can start to see that um, it is a whole big model of, of downtown. Um, it is a rather chunky thing. It also is a rather large file, so it's going to slow down Rhino a lot. And I'm going to show you a way of um, being able to have this information but not having it slow down quite as much. It's called the V-Ray proxy object. We're going to do that today. Uh, but I have it written out in part two that I want you to make this a V-Ray proxy object before bringing in your building. Uh, it's not a bad idea. The problem is we have to make sure that we don't include the site when we do it. Um, so let me go back. I have some preset views. So if you go to set view and we go to perspective one, it'll jump you back down to a, couple, a view that has your site so that you can kind of see it. Let me go to set view. I think perspective two might be a little bit better. Yeah, there you go. So we can kind of see the scene. If we look at the layers here, I've done a little bit of work so that there's an SF model layer and there's also a building layer. We want to make sure that we're not including the building layer when we create the proxy object. Okay. Couple notes about proxy object. Um, V-Ray proxy objects are really, really great for lowering your rendering size, but when you do it, it's a permanent change. Right? You cannot go back from creating one. So you've, you've now destroyed part of your model in creating it. And it's just really important to recognize that that's a, it's, a, it's a gateway that, that you can't come back from. Okay? So it's always good to save an extra version of your work. Right? That would be a good thing. This file you can re-download again. So if you screw it up, it's not the end of the world. Okay? So in terms of creating the V-Ray proxy object, Right? There is a tutorial, it's called V-Ray 8.27 Proxy Objects, that will help walk you through this. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the San Francisco City model, and I'm going to select it rather than trying to select it you know, with the selection box, uh, which I can get a lot of it. Uh, it's a little bit easier to right click on the SF model layer and say select objects, which means I'll get all of those objects. Okay? Now before I actually create the proxy object, I have to assign these objects the material that I ultimately want them to have. Okay? Uh, because once it's a V-Ray proxy object, you can't reassign materials. So that has to be done. So before I do anything, I'm going to go up to my materials, and I'm going to load in, and luckily for you it's already preloaded, a white porcelain material. I'm going to preview it and make sure it shows up the way I want it to. Um, this is a good material because it doesn't require any external image files. It's all created within uh, V-Ray. And it's a little bit shiny, a little bit white. Uh, and so what we're doing in this rendering is we're, we're showcasing your building and we're kind of making everything else kind of grayish white. Um, and so that's the strategy. It's not designed to be a photorealistic rendering. It's designed to be a, a, an image that kind of showcases your building. So uh, I have porcelain white. I want to apply it to the SF City model. right? So what I'm going to do is once again I'll select the objects, 
And because I'm going to end up making this a proxy object, I want to apply the material directly to the objects. So everything's selected here. I'm going to right click on porcelain white. I'm going to say apply material to selection. And now all of those proxy objects have the porcelain white material applied to them. Right? Uh, so I'll go ahead uh, and I can click off. And if I were to switch this into rendered mode, hopefully this doesn't crash. Right? We get a kind of a whitish which is what we were after. Okay, So let me go ahead and go back to shaded mode and there we go. So now I'm going to create this V-Ray proxy object and the purpose of this proxy object is to strip down the bulk of the geometry that's in Rhino in a way that references an external file. So when I create the proxy object it makes a reference file of this object that V-Ray can then read and when it goes to do the rendering it will go to this file and say oh here's a bunch of extra geometry that I need to render right but when you're working in Rhino it doesn't have that geometry in the scene which is nice that also means that we will lose context of what these buildings look like around the scene so you want to be aware that you're going to lose it okay so I'll select go ahead and select the objects again Oops. select objects there we go and I'm going to come up here and you'll see that there's this kind of tree looking object that's in the V-Ray toolbar. Okay? There are two options it's right up here at the top, right there. Uh, if we left click, right, which is your standard click, it's going to import a V-Ray proxy. And if we right click on this button, it will create a V-Ray proxy or write the V-Ray proxy. So we're going to right click on this. And when we do that, it's going to say save VR mesh file. And you want to save this on your flash drive. Now, when we do this, it's really important that we save this file because it's now going to be referenced and we're going to have to have it if we want the rendering to turn out. So I'm going to go ahead and go onto my flash drive into 136 and I'm going to save it in this folder and we'll call this SF proxy. Right? And I'll go ahead and click save and it's going to give me some options. So it tells me that this is where it's going to be saved, right? We want to export all the selected objects as a single mesh file, right? That's correct, right? We want to automatically create the pro proxies. Yes, warn me for existing uh, files. Now this last option here is set triangle count for preview mesh, okay? It does it automatically if we don't check it, right? But this will allow us to have some more geometry that represents our city or less geometry, depending on how big this this particular piece is. I'm going to leave it as the default for right now and not, not check it. I'll go ahead and say OK. And we'll let Rhino do its thing for a second. Right. Got to love the not responding. Right. But we're going to wait. And let it write its proxy object. Now I have no idea how long this is going to take, but we're going to let it let it do its thing, and it will come back. So my um, my version is still trying to make the proxy object, so I'm going to open a new file. But there's enough of you that are kind of through that phase, and a lot of you already have your proxy object. Um, so that's great. Uh, once you have your proxy object, I'm going to do it without the proxy object, but it doesn't really matter from here on out anyway. Uh, the proxy object just makes Rhino a little bit faster while you're working in it. Uh, what I need to do is I need to insert my building onto this building site. Um, if you, if you um, did your proxy object, the site will be somewhere. Uh, you can find it by right-clicking on the building layer here and saying select objects it'll bring up this little pad that represents the base of your building. Uh, mm -hmm. You can then zoom selected to get zoomed in on that particular piece. Once I have that piece of my, uh, my project done here, I need to bring in my skyscraper. So I'm going to bring in the uh, skyscraper mesh. Now remember when we work with blocks that you insert the blocks onto a particular layer. Um, and so I'm going to create a layer first and I'm going to call this skyscraper uh, block. I'll make that active, and then I'm going to go up to edit, insert, or excuse me, edit blocks, insert block instance, and I'm going to browse for my skyscraper. I'll go ahead and say OK, and I'll say OK, I'll say OK one more time, and it will then let me bring it in. Uh, it looks like it's not 
quite in its correct position. So let me go ahead and I'm going to snap it to this corner. And then I'm going to do a rotate to get it to fit. Like that. And now my building fits on the site right there. You can kind of see it in context with the rest of the other buildings. Not absurdly tall, but not short either. When you guys do the next building, it's going to be even taller. Um, so it'll be kind of a, a dominant building. Okay, so I now have this in. Um, it's come in with my skyscraper layer with my materials, so that's what I was after. Uh, so now I'm going to switch again. I'm going to go to set view, perspective 02, so I get kind of a street level view of, of this particular building. Uh, it's there, the materials have been assigned. Now it's a matter of starting to create some environment to work with this. Um, and this is where we move, move forward into some of the rest of this um, scene. So um, I have this in. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to actually establish a sun. Um, and so you've probably seen up here already that under the V-Ray toolbar there is a, a, a little ball that has sun next to it. That represents the V-Ray sun. We're going to click on that and it's going to bring up the sun angle calculator window. And we have complete manual control of the sun in terms of where it goes. But unless you're uh, very well versed in energy and sun position and azimuth and zenith and all the rest of it, it's a little bit too technical for us. So I'm going to uncheck manual control. And I'm going to scroll down. And we see that we have a map of the world and also a bunch of cities that are listed. I usually just start typing in San Francisco. And we'll get San Francisco. Once it's selected in blue, I'm going to go back up a bit in this dialog box and I'm going to change both the time of the year or excuse me the time of the day and the time of the year so right now it's set roughly for today um, and I can change what time of day I want it to be right so I usually pick early in the morning between 9 and 10 that's usually my default time gives us pretty good angle pretty good shadows yeah this is you can modify this after the fact if you want. You can obviously specify a particular day of the year and a particular time. Okay. Once I've done that, I'll go ahead and say OK. And it will create a sun for me, I hope. Okay. But I'm still missing one thing, and that is where the position of the sun is going to be. And it's always helpful if you put the sun somewhere where you know it is. Uh, and so in, in this example, I'm going to put it right on the corner of the building. And I see that there's my little sun. It looks exactly like a directional light. Okay, it just has a different power associated with it. While we're at it, I'm going to go ahead and create a layer that's called environment. And then a sublayer called sun. Now, if you were doing daylight studies, for example, you might create different layers for suns for different times of the year or different times of the day. Right, if you were doing that sort of thing. But right now, we only have one sun, and that's fine. So let me go ahead and move it onto that layer. Change object layer. There we go. So now it's on that layer, right there. Okay, and my sun's been been established. If I wanted to change the time of day, for example, I can select the sun. I can go to properties, and there's a button for light. Okay, when I click on that, I get a button for modify sun. I can then go back through the same process, uncheck manual control come down here and go to San Francisco. It would be really convenient if they remembered your last settings, but it doesn't. So we have to go back through the same process, change the time of day. Let's say I wanted it to be you know, more in the afternoon. If I say OK, it will then update and change the positioning of my sun. OK? Uh, so let me go back. Good enough. Okay, so I now have that. Oops, looks like it undid too far here. Sun, change object layer. Okay, so then once I have the sun established, I need to be able to create a sky for my scene. Uh, and these are V Ray 8.17 to create the sun and V Ray 8.18 to create the sky. Uh, I'm going to go into my V Ray options the O that's right here, and I'm going to go into environment, and some of you have done this before where you've adjusted the color of the sky in the background to be white or the background color to be 
white or something like that. We're going to go ahead and click on the little M next to GI Skylight. And when I click on that M, I'm going to choose from this list something called Tex Sky. Right there. And it's going to ask me what sun is this related to. And I'm going to pick under sun. There's going to be something that's called Rhino Document Sun, and then there's one that has a big long string of numbers. You want the one that's a big long string of numbers. And so I'll go ahead and pick that. I hope if my mouse decides to work. There we go. And I'll go ahead and say OK. Then I'll click on this M for reflection or refraction background. And I'm going to pick text sky again. And I'm going to pick that long string of numbers. And I'll go ahead and say OK. OK. So I have both of those set up. OK. And now, because we now have a real sun in the scene, Right? We can't rely on just the regular rendering. We have to use one other piece of this puzzle, and that is something called a physical camera. Uh, and it's V-Ray 8.19 that walks through a physical camera. But basically what a physical camera does is it mimics going outside with an actual camera, right? your, your phone or your DSLR or whatever, and then properly exposing the scene to control how much light is coming into the camera. And so when we check this box for on, it means I now want to have control over the exposure of this rendering. Um, the only value that's going to matter for you is right here under shutter speed. And the higher this value, right, the darker the scene is going to be. The lower this value, the lighter the scene is going to be. I usually start somewhere around 200, and then I adjust as necessary. So I'll set it at 200 there, and that's it. Okay. Um, we're borderline on the, the need to use network rendering. You don't really need it for today. Next class you will, so we'll go through that process next class. Okay. Uh, under output right now, I have a very, very small output. I like to keep it small when I do the initial rendering to see how it's going to turn out before I actually do a big render. Okay. So I've gotten to this point. Let me go ahead and save my file. My day, this has obviously been my day of the not responding Rhino. Clearly, I should have just rendered it, <laughs> not sick. I guess while we're waiting, I can check to see if it ever wrote my proxy object. Nope, still thinking. All right, so once again, we'll wait for a little bit, and then I'll do the render. OK, so I've been having the worst time today trying to get anything to work. So I just rebuilt the file again because saving crashed it too. So we're just going to go with it uh, and hope that it doesn't crash. Um, I did go ahead and render to where I was left off. And again, this is a very small rendering. And I just want to make sure that the sky is showing up as blue. The exposure is about right. Um, remember, if it's too dark, right? if the image is too dark, you want to um, lower that shutter speed. So I have it at 200. If it was too dark, I'd go to maybe 150. If it was too light, I'd go the opposite direction. right? So that shutter speed is something that, that changes the look. Once I have this looking roughly the way I want, uh, we see that it really chops off the upper part of my building. If I want a little bit more of my building, I'm going to go back to where it says output. And I can change the width and height. So let's increase the height. We'll say like a thousand, something like that, and then I'll go ahead and render this again. I do want to point out that if you do want to invoke the um, network render, you can at this point. We'll talk about it in depth next class, but it is available under System, Distributed Rendering On. Then you'll have to click this button for Hosts, uh, and we can say uh, Find Servers, and we'll go through and find what other servers are out there and available for me. Let it do its thing. Of course, this is probably going to crash because this has been the nature of my day today, right? Yes, there's 12 unused spawners. I'd like all of those, right? We can click on resolve. There they are. They should be checked. It looks like I have a few more that I haven't checked. Let me go ahead and check these. We hope. And this will just speed up my rendering a little bit. be 
so nice if they had to check all buttons. And I'll say okay. Now those are working and I can go ahead and do another render. And this time I'll get a much taller, skinnier render, but that shows more of the upper part of the building because I adjusted uh, the height of the output. Okay, so I'll go ahead and let that render uh, and you guys can see the final results unless it crashes, but that's what we're doing today. Next class we'll talk about different environmental conditions. Do I have to use the So there's the, the final result of the, that render. Um, so you can see that now we're getting daylight, we're getting shadows, but we're also getting the sky in the background. It's not quite to the level where we have clouds or anything yet. That's what we'll do next class. But at least you're seeing that this sun and sky responds to uh, an actual lighting condition, right? We're also getting a little bit more blue off the building, which starts to make it look more like it's a shiny glass than anything else. So we're on that trajectory. Uh, I still have cut off the top part of my building. Uh, there are some options for doing it in terms of how we adjust the camera and whatever. Nothing is required other than to get a rendering out today that has some environment in it. Okay? And we'll talk more about how do you set up the camera and whatever as we go forward.